we're going to talk about tips and tricks. And this is a little bit of a, a different mastering session than our usual mastering sessions. Our masterings are usually kind of a deep dive into a topic. This is more of a, you know, it's kind of all over the place. Um, the reason for that, why do we do that? Why, are, why is this helpful? Is because in, in my experience, for sure, maybe also yours, you always learn from watching someone else do stuff and jump. There are just so many things, so many ways of doing things. So today we just collected a number of tips and tricks. Uh, most of them are uh, used all over, no matter what version of Jump you are. Some of them were specific to Jump 17. Jump 17 came out a year and a half ago, had a lot of new features. And with those new features, a lot of things, a lot of new handy ways to do things. Uh, so we put those in. The exciting news is that Jump 18 is coming out in less than three weeks. Okay, so um, I'm not going to talk about Jump 18 yet, but I might here and there say, oh, this is going to look different in 18 and you're going to like it just to kind of get you excited about Jump 18. So let me bring up a dashboard first, um, just to kind of set the stage for the um, examples we're going to do. We're going to look at food. We're going to look at a, um, a journal where someone logged their meals and look at calories and all that. And then we have a second shorter example uh, that's looking at, OK, we looked at our calories. Now we feel we have to eat healthy. We're going to go to a farmer's market and map those out. And so along the way, we get to a lot of these different ways to do things. And hopefully, you'll get something out of this, uh, some, some way that you didn't know yet or some trick that you were just waiting for that's going to help you. We're going to start with this example one. And I, I've listed in this journal, I listed the tips and tricks I want to get to. And we see, we'll see if I get to all of them. All right. We're going to start from, um, ah, not this one, wrong click. Hold on. We're going to start from this directory. Suppose we have this here as our um, we have a folder and we have these different files in. And actually, I should have deleted this. Let me delete this. This is for later. We have this folder and we have different files in there. Someone logged their meals by day in a separate Excel folder. Um, is, that, um, is that a way people would do that? Maybe not. But you can think of this as maybe an in industry as you have an instrument in the lab and it spits out data by run or by day, or you have limbs data and you have this folder with all these different files. So that's our starting place. We assume that data has the same format in here. How do we get this in? Um, well, we could open these one by one, but that is a lot of work, especially if you have lots of files. So we're not going to do that. I'm going to minimize this here. I'm just going to go to my file menu and go directly to import multiple files. This is truly one of my favorite <laughs> things to do. Um, because it saved me so much time when I was um, in R&D. Um, in this window, you navigate to your folder using this button. Since I already had this open, I already have the right folder populated, but you can navigate to your folder. And then jump will list the number of uh, all the files you have in here. So Excel files, I have some jump files in here. It will just put everything in there. I cannot select them directly in here, but I can use these options here to select. So I can select this and maybe start typing part of a name, or I can uh, filter by extension. In this case, I can add my Excel extension if that's what I'm interested in. I have to remove that blank one with the wild card. Um, and then when I click out of here, you see that all my Excel files have been selected. I can combine this by with file size if I needed to, and you can just use the slider with the date if I needed to as well, uh, but I don't have to. Okay, so when once I have my files selected, there are two things that are super helpful here. Uh, the first one is this first one here. This is the first checkbox, and we check that. It says add file name column. This is super helpful, and I'll I'm, I'm going to hammer on that because that is such a lifesaver, and I'll show you why. The other one is stack similar files. If, if I don't check this and I select 11 files, 
I will get 11 tables and then I have to one by one concatenate these tables, which is a lot of work. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to select this one and select that one and then just click um, import. Here we go. Now I get a data table. It has some kind of generic name based on the file name. And um, I can see what files went into this if I double click this, if I need that for reference. But basically, I get my columns and the three rows for these 11 files. And I get this column file name. Now, this file name, I'm going to first grab that column here, my columns panel, and put it up front. There it is. And when I look at that, I see there is useful information in here. I have the date in here. So how do I get the date out of this whole phrase with the Excel as X in there? I, I used to have long file names there. I used to do all kinds of weird formulas to get the part I needed. But there are simpler ways that I discovered from watching other people do this. I'm going to show you two ways. First way is to go to columns and find my recode. Uh, now, just so you know, the columns menu, the most important functions here in columns, you can also access them by right clicking on your column header. That's usually how I get to recode really quick. So recode either under the column header, right click or under column. OK, that brings up this recode window. If you have used this, you know, this is great to kind of start typing and, you know, maybe grouping values that, you know, with different spellings that are the same. Um, but there are more options here under the red triangle, and, and that el they eluded me for a while. Actually, I think Yasmin, you were the one who showed me the trick that I'm about to show. I always kind of worked with these here, the title case, removing, doing stuff with white space, first word, last word. These are all really helpful. But here under advanced, there is another one that's really nice, extract segment. I'm going to do that. and here. I can specify which part of which generic part of these strings in this column I want to collect, collect. So jump already makes a guess and says, well, maybe you just want this part, or maybe I just want the latter part, right? Um, I can also just unclick some of these delimiters here and just go letter by letter here. Maybe I just want these, the, the date and the month, right? Um, let's just do all of these. And then here's my preview. I see people are liking this. This is great, isn't it? I, I should have known this years ago. It would have saved me a lot of time. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm just going to recode this in place. Recode. There it is. Isn't that great? I love this one. All right. So that is recode under the red triangle and then advanced and extract segment. This here is my date column. I'm going to do stuff with that in a moment, but I wanted to to come back to that sample name and that get that file name in. Um, let me pull up another example. Suppose I had files in here that looked like this. I brought in my file name. In this case, I didn't add data, but these are file names. And I would do this. I would tell, I would come up with some way to name the files if I would run a test on a machine. And if I would be running this with more people, I would say, you have to use it like this. You have to exactly do it like this. And I would stick that post-it note right on the machine. Um, so this is really a real life example. And so my file name would look like something like this. And you can tell there's information in there. So instead of recode and doing that uh, extract segment, there's another really helpful tool. It's under columns. It's not under the right click in the header. We have to go to utilities and then go to text to column. Then jump asks us for the delimiter, which in this case is this underscore. Put that in. Look what, what jump does. It takes all this information and puts it in separate columns. And now I have columns with my information about my sample that I don't have to type. So I have my sample number, I have my um my repeat number, my maybe temperature. This is probably water hardness, the concentration. Here I can do that recode. And get the operator. There are two 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 operators here. MRL is myself <laughs> and some made up person, right? Isn't this great? So if you have lots of samples that you have to bring in, tell yourself to stick to a format, use multiple file import, and um, use text to column. All right. Now you know why I love this. 
Okay, here is my file name, and really it's the date. So I can have to recode this column name, but I also have to add column names here. So we're not done with recodes just yet. We're gonna do a recode on the column names. I mean, I can go and type in each individual column or double click and go into column info and change the name, but there's a shortcut under columns, column names, recode column name. And now this is much more user-friendly, so to say, to um, just change this. Let's see, the first one is meal, et cetera, et cetera. I can add all these uh, column names and just click recode. And there they are. I just did two. I did not want you to make me see, um, do all the typing. I'm just going to run a little script to add the rest in here. So you can skip me painstakingly typing out all these names. Here we are. Okay. So this is our data table, food journal. We have the date in. My date is categorical right now. Um, and Jump likes dates to be continuous, numeric, because then it can do math with it. So we have to tell Jump that this is a date. How do we do that? We go right click, column info, and I'm gonna change the this from character to numeric and then to continuous. Now I'm gonna put this on a side. Look what happens in my column when I say apply. I get this really weird number. This would freak me out at some point when I didn't know <laughs> what was going on. But this is actually jump time. It's the time in seconds since January 1st, 1904, I believe. Um, so this is what jump likes because we can do math with this. I don't like to see it this way. So what we need to do is we need to apply a mask to it, a format that looks a little bit more um, friendlier to us. So here in this format section, we go to best, and then I can navigate down to date or to time if I have a time with it um, and just apply any format. So let's just pick the first one, click OK. And now we have a date and it's blue. OK. So let's take a look at our, at our data table. This is correct. Um, what about all these values? If you haven't seen this toggle here yet, it's a good one. Let's click on that. What it does, it opens up a summary of the data in these columns. So I can see the levels I have for the date, I have my minimum and my maximum value. I have levels here and I have my minimum value and my max for these uh, numeric columns. Okay, so that's really helpful. What if I always wanna see this? I can set that, actually, I don't always have to click this open. I'm gonna to go to File and Preferences. Note, by the way, that for Preferences, I can use a shortcut, Control K. If you're a shortcut person, these uh, shortcuts, good to take note, notice of these. All right, in Preferences, we're gonna to navigate to Data Table because I'm look, working in my data table. So we're gonna to go to Tables here. Here is where I can set that summary graph to always appear. I'm going to click that on. And so this will always have to be here. 